Aloha, and welcome to this episode of the Hawaii School Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today is a saxophonist, vocalist, songwriter, and producer who hails from New York. She has toured around the world and has shared the stage with many contemporary jazz notables such as the Rippingtons, Nick Colleone, Chuck Loeb, Chuck Loeb, Cindy Bradley, Hiroshima, Bob James, David Sanborn, Gerald Albright, and the list go on. She has enjoyed 10 Billboard Top 30 charting singles. I am so honored and happy to have her here on the show today. Please, let's welcome Miss Paula Atherton to the show. Aloha, Paula. How are you? Aloha, Gwen. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much. I know you are on Eastern time, so it's late where you are. So <laughs> you are here joining me, and I am just so happy, happy, happy. For those of you who don't know, I just saw Paula a couple weeks ago at the Oxnard Jazz Festival in Oxnard, California, and she killed it. Absolutely <laughs> killed it, killed it, killed it. So, you know, I saw her and I was like, you know what? I have got, always went to interview. Got to get her on my show. And look, she is here today. So again, yeah. thank you. <laughs> so, so let's get this interview started. How did you get into the music industry? How did you get to the music industry? Uh, well, let's see. I started, you know, singing really early and then playing flute when I was nine and studying jazz in my teens. And that's when I started playing saxophone. Um, as far as knowing what to do business wise, I, there's no map on that. Uh, it's kind of like trial and error and you're going to make a lot of mistakes. And I did. <laughs> wow. you now, do you, you come just, from a musical family? No, no. I just loved music oh. and uh, I didn't even really get lessons when I was a kid because my parents couldn't afford it. So I didn't really start to have lessons myself until I could pay for them. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. But you know, when you want something bad enough, you work to get it. Yes. And yes. it was in my heart. So I had to go, I had to go get it. Wow, and I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. Now we know you sing, we know you play the saxophone, and you just said that you play the flute. Yes. What other instruments do you play? Um, I play soprano sax, and I've recorded some tunes on soprano sax on my first couple of albums. I kind of stopped recording on it because I can't bring it with me <laughs> on the plane, you know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I bring my alto, my flute, and... Uh, my microphones and stuff, but I, I can't bring another instrument. So, but I think I might play it on my seventh. I have room for another uh, song or two and I might, I might bring that back. And I play baritone sax just for parts, you know, like I'll rent one, I don't own one. I'm not bringing it anywhere, don't call me. <laughs> the thing is like humongous, you know, I love it, but it's, you know, it's outrageous, it's so huge. Um, and uh, piccolo, uh, I'm a clarinet owner. You know, the woodwinds, pretty much, you know. All the woodwinds instruments. And, and I play enough piano to be able to write, you know. Nice. Nice. I'm a woodwind person myself. I played flute. I started out the clarinet and then played flute and piccolo in college. So I'm with you there, girl. I'm with you. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm with you. Now, I asked this question um, of all my artists because I'm I love to hear their answers. The pandemic put everyone at a standstill, especially the entertainment field. What did you do during that time to keep sane? <laughs> My career took off. <laughs> okay. It did. It did. It absolutely did. I had my first number one on Billboard in 2020 during COVID. During COVID, that's when you... That's, that's when everything opened up for me. <laughs> <It's>, I, <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. It sounds completely insane, but I'm not making it up. Uh, I My sixth album wasn't done yet, um, but the first single, Can You Feel It Was, and we released it in January, 
And I think by May, it had hit number one on Billboard Media Base and the Smooth Jazz Network. And, uh, you know, because we were quarantined pretty much. Mm -hmm. And you see, I'm in the studio now. So we just went about finishing it and released the full album that September. And then in 2021, uh, I released um, Summer Song, another single from Can You Feel It? And that went to number one. So I'm not, I'm. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy because I couldn't work. I couldn't go out and do anything about it. But as far as what, what was happening with my music on the radio it was crazy. It was amazing. Well, I know I play some of your stuff on my radio show. And, and it's out of this world. Trust me. Oh, on thank now. you. Thank you. Trust me on that one. So you didn't do, I know a lot of entertainers, they did a lot of um, online shows. Did you do any of those? like on online performances? Oh, I, I did some of them with tracks and stuff like that. Yeah, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I did a few of those. You know, okay. musicians were doing okay. whatever they could do, you know, whatever they could right. do. Right, but I know you guys are glad everything is open back up and you guys are out there doing your thing. Absolutely, I mean, that was, it was scary. I'm in New York and it was terrible here. Uh, Yes. It was like, yes. I think the worst, it was. the worst state in the, in the United States. We were losing like 8,000 people a day. It was really like crazy. And you, you look at that on TV and you're like, I don't know, am I ever going to work again? Am I ever going to be able to go anywhere or do anything? You know? So thank God that things exactly. it took a while, but at least they turned around, you know? Yes. Yes. Now we're going to talk about your albums. And I'm just going to go through the list because you have six out right now. As you said, you have a seventh that's up and coming, but it's not out yet. You're still that's working right. on that one, right? That's, that's so right. 2001, you did Let Me Inside Your Love, right? 2009, you had Groove With Me. 2012, you had Enjoy the Ride. 2015, you had Ear Candy. I love the names of these. I love these titles. 2018, <laughs> you had Shake It. And then, of course, your latest album out now um, came out in, in 2020 is Can You Feel It? Yeah. I want you to tell us a little bit as to how you came up with that title for Can You Feel It? It just seemed like the right thing to do since that was my first number one on Billboard and it was a title we just made it the title track of the album. I mean, previously I didn't do that. I, I had a concept for the album and it, and it wasn't one of the songs, except for Shake It. Shake It was one of the tunes on the record too. But before that, you know, it wasn't. But uh, it's hard coming up with names for things. Uh, things like instrumental tunes, very hard mm -hmm. coming up with a name or a title for an album, difficult to do. But since that wound up being, you know, my first number one, it seemed like the only way to go. Nice, nice. Now, I want to congratulate you because we just talked about this before, before, you know, we're coming on air. I want to mm -hmm. congratulate you for you, because you told me yourself that you just, your latest single that's out now entitled Ready or Not has just hit number 10 on the billboard. That's right. Today. Yes. Right. It's true. It's true. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, I know. Hey, you are just killing it. You're killing it. You are so killing it. Congratulations on that. How did you come up with that title, Ready or Not? That sounds like a title, like, you know. Uh, you know, again, it's an instrumental tune. So we were like, ah, what are we going to call it? I think my husband came up with that one. It was either him or Adam Hawley who produced it. I don't remember. Uh, Cause we were oh. like, you know, coming up with names back and forth, back and forth. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? So I don't remember, but it was either Adam or my husband, Lou, that came up okay. with it. Well, ready or not, everybody, you need to get ready for Miss Paula Atherton. <laughs> she's, she's on it. She is definitely on it. Now you have collaborated with many artists. Who would be your dream collaboration? John Baptiste. Oh, really? Oh, I can really. See 
I can see you doing something with him too. I love him. I think he's great. He's just so joyful and he brings so much joy to the world with his music. Um, I miss seeing him on Colbert now. So yeah, I'd love to collaborate with him. Well, you know, like I tell everybody, you need to go ahead and speak that into existence. You know, just say you're going to work with him. I just and did. Have- <laughs> <laughs> and you never know. You never know what's going to happen, Paula. You never, you never, never know. Never know. Now let's talk a little bit. I want to. You never know. Now there's many saxophonists out there. I want to know what sets you apart from these other saxophonists that are out there in the industry. I think everybody kind of has their own sound and their own identity. It's such a personal instrument. You're creating the wind to make the sound. So if I played, if I took somebody else's saxophone with their mouthpiece and reed and their whole setup, I wouldn't sound like them. Even though I'm playing the same exact thing that they are, I would sound like me because it really has a lot to do with the person that's playing it and how they hear sound. Now you have worked very closely with Miss Cindy Bradley. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> How did you guys? Now I, I, you, I want you to tell us. How did you guys come up with the fabulous lines? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of like a you know tongue in cheek name, kind of a joke, you know, because uh, uh-huh. well we go out to dinner sometimes and we have margaritas and stuff and like have some laughs and. Uh, that's just the title we were like calling calling ourselves. And uh, when we started doing some shows together over the past couple of years, the agent wanted to know what we were called. And I was like, the fabulous blondes. I don't know what else to go. <laughs> and so so we went with that, you know. Now, do you and Cindy have anything coming up in the works? No, we, we did uh, a couple of shows this year. The last one was at Glenora Winery. Uh, and that was really fun. I'm hoping next year that we do some more. We played, uh, our first show was last year in Norfolk at the Waterfront Jazz Festival. And uh, it was raining and there was a lightning storm. So they told us that we had to go in an indoor venue. And we were like, where's that gonna be? We were opening for David Sanborn. So there was a lot of people there, right? So they drive us to the back of this building and they open the door and we walk in and I walk in there and I'm like, Oh my God, it was the Scope Arena in Virginia. Do you know what that looks like? Oh no, really? Yes, I know. It's like the size of Madison Square Garden in New York. Yeah, with a jumbotron and everything. That was our first gig. That was our first gig that we did. (laughs) Oh, wow. Where are we gonna go from here, you know? Yeah, it was crazy. Oh. I can imagine your face. I can imagine your face when you saw that. I was like, it, I mean, the sound was great. Everything, the lighting, uh, it was wild. It was wild doing a gig like that in a place like that. It was great. Well, I want you to talk a little bit about, you work with an organization that, that brings music to autistic children, cancer patients, and hospice patients. I want you to tell us a little bit about the work that you do with the organization Music That Heals. Uh, They're a really wonderful organization run by this uh, great woman, Kathy Lord. And um, I studied music therapy. So I'm always interested in the wonderful things that music can do to help people, different types of people in different situations. so yeah, I did a show for her recently, uh, Labor Day. We played at Calvary Hospital, which is basically a hospice hospital in New York. And um, it's, it's such a gift being able to do that, uh, to, to give to people in that way. You, it, it's indescribable, you, you get so much back, you know? And that's not the reason why I do it. I, I just, I like giving of myself like that. But it's, you know, like they say to us when we're in that hospital, they're like, you know, we're there. First of all, they're so nice to us and thankful that we're there. And they're like, you know, this could be their last show. These people that are here, you know, 
So it's, it's, it's an important uh, type of work. Sometimes it's not easy, especially in a hospice situation. Uh, when I do that, it just wipes me out, you know? But, um, you know, it's about uh, giving, being kind, caring for others. It's the best we can be. Yes. Yes, and that's just such a gift to music, um, to, to take your music to share, to share with those people, whether it's the kids uh, and, and the patients. Yeah. So that, that's remarkable. For our curious saxophone players out there, yeah. what brand of saxophone do you play? Um, I've been playing Dakota sax. I endorse them and uh, I play them on the road. I do workshops for them and that sort of thing. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, we have a few more minutes and I have a few more questions for you. Okay. And this one, I have to ask all my artists. I have to ask that. What advice would you give to a new musician coming into the industry? New musician, new artist. What advice would you give them coming into this industry? Follow your path. Listen to your heart and stay on your own path. Everybody has a path. It's like your fingerprint. And, you know, it's easy to maybe look at things that other people are doing and feel like, well, I wish I could do that. You may be doing that. It's just not your time yet. You have a different path. And you're, you're just wasting time looking at what someone else is doing. Your thing is going to be unique to you. So you just have to kind of follow that, pay attention to it. And you'll get there. Just work hard, you'll get there. I love that. I love that, I love that, I love that. Now, what upcoming shows do you have? What what things should I be marking on my calendar to come to see you, <laughs> come to see you perform? <laughs> well, let's see. October 1st, I'll be in Louisville, Kentucky, doing a double bill with Carol Albert. And then I've October 2nd, I'll be at the Hyatt Regency in New Brunswick, New Jersey, playing with Jazz and Pink for the uh, Hub City Jazz Festival. Okay, and then, Wisconsin. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And then the week after that, October 7th and 8th, I'm playing at Brothers in um, Norfolk, Virginia. Okay. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And I have a bunch of things coming up next next year. We were just talking about Portugal. Um, mm -hmm. So I think my show there is going to be on May 11th in the Algarve in, uh, next May. Okay. So where can people go? Number one, where can people go to find your music? And number two, where can they go to find all of your upcoming events? Because I know you didn't name all of them because we don't have time. But where can they go? Uh, well, I'm on Facebook. I have a fan page and a, and a friend page. Um, Twitter. I'm on Twitter. Uh, Instagram. Uh, my Instagram handle is uh, Paula Atherton Music. On Twitter, Patherton1. And uh, I'm on LinkedIn. That's about it, I think. <laughs> okay. And yeah, what's my your website? My website, which is yeah, my name. What's your website? Mm -hmm. It's uh, PaulaAtherton.com. Okay, yeah. so you hear that, everyone? Go to Paul. Go to what is it? PaulaAtherton.com. Yeah. Go, go there. You can check her out. It's a, it's a great website. You can check her out. Um, you can check out where she's going to be playing because I'm going to be following her on some of these things, and I need to try and get her here to Hawaii. We talked about that. Most yes, <laughs> yes. I'm also on uh, bands, bands in town. If people want to join bands in town, they get uh, oh, okay. no. Yeah. Okay. All right. You heard that, everyone, right? You heard that. Paula, I thank you so much for being here with me today. I'm going to have to do another interview with you, probably here in a couple months, find out what's okay. going on, anything new, keeping track of you. You are yeah. killing it on the billboard with these songs, I tell you. Tell you, tell you, tell you. I will keep following you for sure. Well, thank you so much. I mean, I have a great team. I'm working with great producers, and uh, it makes all the difference in the world. Well, you stick with that team. You stick with that team, and I'm going to keep following you. 
for sure. <laughs> I told you to stick with my team. They're the best. <laughs> Thank you so much again for taking time out of your busy schedule. And it's in late in the evening over there. But thank you so much for taking the time to sit here with me for this interview. I'm definitely going to be following you. And you might see me in Portugal next to you. You never know. Oh, and I might <laughs> be seeing then, you to my fans, to my viewers. <laughs> oh, yes, most definitely. Most definitely. Most definitely. To, to my viewers, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, aloha. And God bless. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.